Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is extend the work that we've been doing so far on the multiplication rule for indices or exponents. But this time, what I'm looking at is where we have got, say, something like 2 to the power 4 in brackets and it's all squared. What would our final result be for something like this? Well, what we've got here then is 2 to the power 4, so we can think of this as 2 multiplied repeatedly by itself 4 times over. 2 to the power 4 then. But then what we're doing to this result is we're squaring it. So we've now got to multiply this result by itself, repeat it again. We've got to square it in other words. So we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I've spaced this out a little here just to uh, hopefully simplify the operation visually, but essentially you have got equal spacing between all our twos. But what have we got? We've essentially got 2 repeatedly multiplied by itself 8 times over. So we've got 2 to the power 8 for short. What happens if we do an algebraic example? Let's suppose we were to look at, say, x squared, all cubed. What would our result be for that? Well, if you haven't guessed it already, it is, in fact, x to the power 6. It's because we've got x squared, x times x, repeatedly multiplied by itself, three times over. So we've got x times x, x squared, multiplied by another x squared, that's x times x, multiplied by another x squared, x times x. So you can see that we've got x repeatedly multiplied by itself six times over. So x to the power six. So what does this seem to suggest then? A general rule that if you've got something, let's just call it x, to the power, say, m, and that is repeatedly multiplied by itself n times over, the result is x to the power m times n, mn. You can see it working here. We've got 2 to the power 4 2s, which are 8. Here we've got x to the power 2 3s, which are 6. So x to the power m all to the power n is then x to the power m times n, x to the power mn, a result that you should try and remember. Now in my next example, let's say we introduce some numbers into this. You've got to be careful with ones like this, so easy to make mistakes. Let's suppose we had 3, we don't always have to have x, we can have another letter, let's say a, 3a to the power 5, and all of this is squared. What would our answer be for this one? Well, the answer is going to be, in fact, 3 squared, which is 9, a to the power 10, 9a to the power 10. It's because we've got 3a to the power 5, 3a to the power 5, and we're squaring this, so we're multiplying it then by another 3a to the power 5. So you can see that what we get is 3 squared, 3 times 3, which is 9. And then we've got a to the power 5 times another a to the power 5. Remember, we would add the powers here, which gives us 10. Or simply, we use this rule here, which is a to the power 5 all squared, 5 times 2, which is 10, a to the power 10. And here's another example where we have other letters involved. Let's suppose we had 2a cubed b squared, and all of this result was cubed. What would our final result for this one be? Well, it's going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, OK, let's just write this down as 2 that is repeatedly multiplied by itself 3 times over, 2 cubed. That's going to give us the 8. Then we've got a cubed, all cubed, so that's going to be a 
to the power 9 as we multiply those two threes together. And then for the b's we've got b squared all cubed. b squared times b squared times b squared. It's b to the power 6, 2 times 3, b to the power 6. So 2 cubed, a to the 9, b to the power 6 reduces then to 8, a to the power 9, b to the power 6. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea. Be careful though when you've got these numbers. So often you see things like 2 times 3 giving us 6. No, it's not. It's 2 cubed. 2 cubed being the 8. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then on how you go about handling examples like this where we have got brackets involved.